This is the word I believe that God has brought you here to receive. What makes God stop? Luke chapter 19. See, that's the story that I heard. It's what really got me thinking in this direction. This is where the Holy Spirit begins speaking to me. It's Luke chapter 19. And many of you know the story because we sing songs about it. And if you've ever been in a children's church setting, I, I, you've probably heard about this guy. A little bitty short guy. You remember him? Zacchaeus. A wee little short man. And the guy that was talking about him, he said, you know what? If I was Zacchaeus, I don't know if I would like the song that they sang about me. Who wants to be called a wee little short man? Isn't that how the song goes? Is that right? Wee little short man? Wee little man. Whatever. Wee little. Who wants to be called wee? A wee little man. No man wants to be. You don't even sound like a man anymore. And he, he talked about it and everybody laughed, kind of like you're laughing. But he started to get into the story. And many of you already know the story, but let's just highlight real quick. Because this is one of those moments where Jesus just stopped everything that was going on. And everywhere that everybody was going and everything that everyone was anticipating, he just brought it to a standstill so he could recognize someone. But who was Zacchaeus? See, that's the interesting part of the story. He wasn't, he wasn't like a Roman. He wasn't a, a Midianite or some. No, he was a Jew. He was a Jewish man, and he had grown up in the Jewish culture. And he had been taught all the things that all the other Jewish people had been taught. But at some point along the way, he took a turn. He did. His free will decided to go a different way. That's what happened. And as a result of this man who was once a part of the body, he has now been dismembered and ostracized and pushed away from the body. That he used to have fellowship with the church. He used to have fellowship with the brothers and the sisters. And everything was good at one time. But because of a bad decision or a series of bad decisions, or maybe a, maybe, maybe a bunch of people who, who, who were pushing him the wrong way, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus did some things and became a part of some things that he should not have been. And so who was he? He wasn't just a wee little man. No, no, he was, he was someone that used to be plugged in, someone that used to be a part, someone that had been pushed away, forgotten about, no one wanted to talk to, everyone thought he would be better off dead than he would be alive. Why? Because he was the tax guy. And how did the tax guy make his money back in those days? He didn't just charge and, 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 and levy the Roman tax, but there was a percentage. Whatever else he could get out of you became his wage, and so he was a burden to the people. He was once among the people, and now he's fighting against the people. He's still a Jew. He's still part of the family, but he's been pushed out. He's been pushed away. Nobody wants him. No one accepts him. Nobody wants anything to do with him. But the Bible says, you remember the story, right? That one day Zacchaeus, like so many other people, heard that Jesus was coming. And so, with a small, glimmering bit of hope that he held on to, it says he found a what? A sycamore tree, right? And he climbed out on this tree. And if, if you really think about the story, he'd really been pushed out. He'd been pushed away. And in so many ways, his life was hanging out on a limb. And here he is, in the tree, not not. not we think, oh, it was a physical thing that he was unable to see Jesus. No, 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 there was a spiritual thing going on here. Because he was once a part of the body. He was once plugged into the church. But the church now would not receive him. They rejected him and they shunned him. That's what the church had done. But what did God do? What did, how did God react? What did Jesus do? He, I mean, the crowd is moving. People are excited. I'm sure people are singing. Everyone's anticipating. It, 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 it's, it's now triumphal entry time coming up. Everyone, it, it's the king. He's coming. And they're all excited. And they're pushing. And they're pressing. And everyone is having a party. And hallelujah, glory be to God. The church is doing their thing. And God says, stop. Jesus said, stop. And I'm sure people fell over because they had such momentum. They looked up. He said, hey, Zacchaeus, come on down here, man. 
I'm going to have lunch at your place. Is that okay? And the church falls apart. I mean, the church just disintegrates. What? Are you kidding me? Do you know who he is? Do you know what he's done? I mean, it'd be one thing if he was a Moabite, you know. We would expect that, you know. If he was a Samaritan, we, 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 would, we would expect that. But he was a Jew. He knew better. And he's in the middle of this God sin becomes such a burden on my life and you tell me God to stop because you want to recognize this one sinful man yep that's what he said that's exactly what he said he stopped everything everything and you're going to eat with him you're going to have fellowship with this disgusting waste of skin that's how they felt about him because Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. You see, the first thing you've got to realize, you, the, the first thing that you've got to understand about the Savior that we serve, the Jesus that we worship and that we sing about, the one thing that will make him stop, long before he'll ever stop for you and stop for the need that you have, is to go after the lost sheep. It's to pursue the one who doesn't know him. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. What makes God stop a lost and a dying world? What makes God stop? What makes God's heart beat? It's people coming into the kingdom, getting saved, receiving his Son, Jesus Christ. That's what makes him stop. First and foremost, the Holy Spirit wanted me to remind you that this is not about you this relationship that you have with God look if you're in a relationship then, 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 then God says that's great and that's wonderful but how about the one who is not what makes God stop first and foremost understand this is the one who does not know him the one who maybe once did but has rejected him. The one who has been pushed away and is out on a limb and ready to fall into the fire. That is the one every single time that he will stop for. Paul was on his way to Damascus to do some more damage to the church. God stopped for him. There was one day in your life when you didn't know him. You had rejected him, but he stopped for you. What makes God stop? A lost and a dying soul Every single time he did it for you, he did it for me, and he's dying. He has already died to do it for the one who does not know him. What makes God stop? Zacchaeus. That's who. Luke chapter 19. See, that's what makes God stop. 